I was very flattered one time when Jim White contacted me and wanted to know if I wanted to go on a dove hunt. And he was having several people over and uh, going to have a big dove hunt. And found out that Dave Baker was invited. And, um, and I will tell you that uh, Mike Posey was along. And Mike Posey had somebody working for him. And I, this is terrible. I don't remember his name. And, um, and there were a couple other people that, uh, that weren't from Motlow, but they were all on the dove hunt. And so we showed up one morning, and I can tell you that this, uh, Jim White had permission to hunt in a cornfield right on the edge of Tim's Ford Lake. And, and I have never seen Jim so happy in all my days because I saw the battlefield commander that he was, because he had told me that they would meet at Sack and Pack. There's, and that market still exists there in Estill Springs. Meet at Sack and Pack at 0600 hours. So Dave Baker drove, Dave Baker came by my house and it was about five in the morning. We loaded up our guns, threw a little ammo in the truck, just like good Southern people would, and off we go. We get to Sack and Pack, we're a little early, and believe it or not, Jim has a, a writing pad, and on this writing pad, he has the field drawn out. And so we all sat at a long table in the back, in the very back of Sack and Pack, and he'd already ordered food for us. We all had biscuits, and sausage and, and coffee to drink. And while we were sitting at this long table, Jim stands at the end of the table showing us the field that we're going to be attacking and, and the approach that we're going to have in our battle. And I got so tickled because he turned to me and he said, Billy, you and somebody else, you're going to be the FIBA. And I think that's the word. It stands for forward edge of the battle area. But I had to ask Dave Baker what that meant, but I wouldn't ask him out loud, or not very loudly, because I didn't want to disappoint Jim, because I always wanted to look smart in front of Jim. But I was the FIBA. Dave Baker was something like the Coppola. And, and I remember now that that had something to do with the command of the battle area, central, something other. And so, but that was the Coppola. And um, so those of you that uh, have years in the military, sorry, I'm botching these words up so bad. And the rest of the people were going to fight on the perimeter. And so we saw where we're, where we're located. And I'm going to tell you that this field is very close to Sack and Pack. And I still drive that way sometimes to Winchester. And I think about that today. And I think it's a soybean field today, but it's literally is after right past Sack and Pack, you go across a bridge uh, that is the Timsport Lake, and literally right past that, I think there's a furniture store there now. We parked in that parking lot, and the field is, I think it was about 40 acres all behind it, and at that time it was all in corn. And, and so sure enough, the sun was rising. It was a beautiful morning, and we go to the field, and we march to our places, and Jim had a ball because he would rotate. He would march around to all the places where people were. And, uh, and he would tell me again, now, Billy, you're in the Fibla. And I said, yes, sir. And I said, I'll hold it down. And uh, now I did get right tickled. Two things happened. And one, I think Jim misread something. You know, when you look at a distance, when you look in the distance, a few scattered birds look so much thicker in distance because you're looking through a lot of territory and so it looked like there were a lot of birds somewhere else and so Jim would always he would move his troops to where the birds were but when we got there there were no more birds there much than there were where we'd been but I guess one of the funniest things was and I, this is terrible I do not remember the person's name it was somebody that worked here for a short time and he worked with Mike Posey he was down the field just a little ways from me. I'm going to say about 30, 40 yards. And Jim, the, the gentleman had said it. I don't think he'd ever hunted before. 
And so Jim made some comments about, well, try not to shoot any of us. And, um, and he had a real fancy over under gun. And so uh, this is not for youth TV. Uh, Jim White told me, he said, oh, he's got a rich bitch gun. <laughs> So he said, don't know what to do with it. So he had this beautiful engraved over-under shotgun. And Jim parked him under a tree. And so we're all having a pretty good morning. We're shooting some stuff. And all of a sudden, I hear Jim, between me and this person, saying, just shoot it out of the tree. Shoot it out of the tree. Because this person had killed no birds. No birds. Now... All of a sudden, I could, I could barely hear this person's voice. I'd almost see him, but um, he said, well, I can't kill one just sitting still. And Jim's yelling and said, it's the only way you'll kill the enemy. And so these were the best times I have to admit. I, I think back on Dave Baker now, too. And Dave did not have a good day shooting. And, uh, and I remember Dave being furious because at the end of the day, I think he'd killed like three doves or something other. And... Jim just gave him fits because, you know, a Marine couldn't hit nothing. And uh, I will tell you that was, we started 6 in the morning. We finished about lunchtime, 1 o'clock, and I had a ball. If I had only videotaped, if I could have known and videotaped this, what an adventure it would be. But anyway, that's one of my Jim White stories. And, and I will tell you, I don't know who's going to ever watch this. But if you ever knew Jim White, it really put relish on this story because he was a great man. I have been fortunate to work under a few really fine men, and Jim White was one of them.